Hickok 45 here. Some of you think I have large hands just because I can hide a uh, Beretta Model 92. Funny, huh? Actually, it's not a 92. Looks like a smaller version of it. The Cheetah, the 80X. Let's shoot this little Cheetah, 380. Oh, yeah, it's accurate. Let's see if it hits hard. Yep, put that cowboy out of his misery. Not bad as a bowler. Not bad as a, a two-liter shooter. <laughs> and I forgot to set up any pot to smoke. Terrible. Woohoo! All right. Yeah, 380, 95 grains going down range. So uh, that's the thing. The little Beretta 80X 380. This firearm. Uh, was around right and I'm not sure when it started but it was around in the 70s the 80s I guess and uh, and this is a, uh, a return you know the modern version of the uh, the cheetah and you all have been requesting it you've been asking about it uh, for a while and uh, I don't know oh yeah I talked to the brother people at the NRA meeting you know and and I got to send one okay and again, we uh, have uh, decided that we would uh, occasionally get a firearm that we're having trouble getting a hold of, you know, from a manufacturer, again, which we've not done for many, many, many years. And uh, we'll just donate it. How's that? This one's going to the TFA, the Tennessee Firearms Association, the auction this fall in September. Okay, so if you're there, you'll see it. Um, so, you know, interesting firearm to try. 380 not my first choice in a, in a larger gun that shoots the 380 i have to say there's another thing i was thinking about i meant to bring out maybe a lcp or lcp max or something out here but y'all know what they'll look like and that's the kind of the conundrum you know this is a sweet shooting any firearm this size this weight that shoots the 380 cartridge you know it's not a big powerhouse not quite a 44 magnum it's going to be fairly comfortable to to fire isn't it it's going to feel good uh you know your your uh, the lack of recoil is noticeable it's just normally when you're firing a firearm the size it's going to be a nine millimeter at least and you know they don't exactly kick a great deal but you know you, you're shooting a gun and a little bit of recoil and the 380 is very soft and uh, we can talk about that see yeah let's reach out to the uh, gong with this thing I think I hit the gong in the uh, Sunday video with this, didn't I? It's hard to hear it. Uh, there we go. Held a little higher there. Yeah, it's especially hard to hear it when you don't hit it, I've noticed. That's just one of those phenomena. Cowboy, I don't like you. <laughs> Uh, let's put one on Alabama holster here. Or two. Yeah, a two left to put on Alabama holster. <laughs> Appreciate their support. Uh, maker of quality Kydex concealment holsters. And you know, I've been using them for a long, long, long time. And I have one in my pocket right now. So check them out at alabamaholster.com. Great company. So yeah. Nice little shooter. Uh, got a variety of ammo. Let me, uh, I don't know what I'm shooting. Oh, this is some that Brett has sent with it. Norma. Uh, I want you to say this is a uh, non expanding defensive ammo. Non expanding. It sounds contradictory, doesn't it? Non expanding defensive ammo. So uh, I shot some of this. Shot some of it, I think, in the Sunday video. So I'll try some more of that out. Okay. And uh, just a little variety. It's nice to have variety now. Uh, you know, Brett has sent this along. Pretty cool. Uh, yeah, we'll just fire a little bit of everything here. Now, I've got to make up for my brainlessness, too. I'll just finish up with these. Uh, I mean, both mags. You know, in the Sunday video, I, I took the first shots with it. Hopefully, you're catching the Sunday shoot arounds every Sunday morning, post about 5 a.m. Central Time, as many of you already know. Uh, and it was the first shots, and I uh, I displayed my ignorance and uh, and not having read the instruction manual. You would think I wouldn't necessarily need to at this point. <laughs> I have a Beretta, I've had several Berettas, but 
in that video what I did was, as I often will do uh, with a gun, uh, I had fired for a while or a new one. I said, well, let's just put it on safe and test the safety, make sure the safety works. Well, when I pulled the trigger, well, I'll do it now, but it went bang. And that was my, my fault because I clicked that up and expected the safety to be on. If I looked at it more carefully, I would have noticed that red uh, dot was not fully covered, which would have maybe been a clue of some sort. Okay, so if I push up what I, like I should have, it, it would have decocked it. Okay, and that essentially makes it safe. It will not, you know, fire like that, okay? And when you put it down, it will fire double action first and then the single action, okay? So it is a safety. Uh, puts it in double, or decocks it, puts it in double action mode if you take the safety off. So I'm ready to fire now, but it's in double action mode. So this is a double action, single action firearm. And first though, you gotta have one in the chamber. I hadn't done that, okay? So let's do that again. I'll put it up there on safe. It decocked it, put it down. And now it's in single action mode. For new shooters, since it's hot, I don't wanna get the camera out. You see the trigger's back and it's gonna be a light. The hammer's cocked and it's a, take a light pull to fire it. Okay, single action. So you go from double to single, that's the way it is. You really cannot carry this like a 1911. There's no provision really for carrying this cocked and locked. Like right now, of course it's empty. It is cocked, but I cannot, you know, have a side holster and have this thing cocked and carry it like this with a safety on. That's not it, <laughs> that's not there, yeah, okay? So it decocks it and I can carry it double action, put the safety off and, and have it double action. Okay, on my first shot, and that's what you do, generally speaking, right? Double, single. Uh, so, um, you know, you're not gonna fire this gun single action, am I right here now, until you have fired it double action, probably. Unless you put around the chamber, and then you go ahead and, you know, get it in single action mode, you're at the range, you're ready to shoot it. But you wouldn't probably wanna carry this thing hot, with the hammer cocked, uh, uh, you know, no safety on. You know, especially in single action mode, it's got a fairly light trigger, single action mode. I know you could argue, well, a Glock, same as carrying a Glock, you just don't have a hammer you can see, you know, or in some other firearms. Uh, but and I don't think you would carry it like that, you know. So, anyway, that's the only way you could do it to fire the first shot, single action. All right, it was all that confusing. Uh, did I clear that up like mud? So, the thing that got me in, if you missed the Sunday video, what's wrong with you for one thing? You should be seeing every video. Uh, what the deal was, was when you push that up there, there is a distinct notch there, a stopping point kind of thing, and you just push on through that, okay? And when I did that the first time, I thought, well, it's definitely a, like a notch there. It's meant for something, you know, so I thought the safety was engaged, but not just so. Word to the wise, just push it all the way up. Uh, that notch is irrelevant, okay? If it is a notch, and it feels like a notch. It feels like a clear, <laughs> okay? So, just emphasizing my brainlessness, all right? So, but that's cool, that's, we do that several times, we may do that today on a firearm, is uh, later, is bring out a firearm we've not even fired yet, and, and just see how it works. See how dumb I can be, ignorant with it. Uh, I'm gonna try to hit that old ram over there. Can't tell whether it's hitting it or not. I must have one of those because it fell over. How about a bowling? He <laughs> doggies. All right. Now the big question always comes up with a firearm like this. Uh, well, first of all, what's it cost? I think it's about 800 bucks. You know, MSRP, I believe. Uh, and is that well? That's a big gun for a 380. You know. But, you know, a lot of people are trying to be objective here, even though I am not as likely to buy a 380 that's this, this weight and this class, this, this size firearm. It's not gigantic or anything. Uh, it's just that there are so many really small firearms in 380. That's where 380 really shines. I mean, you literally can have a pocket gun you don't know you have in 380, right? And we can name them, you know, LCPs and others. Uh, so it is kind of a large firearm. 
holds 13 of them in these mags and they have 10 round mags too for other states but <coughs> excuse me uh, there are advantages though i mean to me the disadvantages are it's a kind of a big heavy gun is blowback uh uh you know in function uh, the disadvantage is it's heavy and it's larger it's not a pocket gun and you're carrying a 380 and you could have a firearm this size that is a 9 or a 40 or something you know or other calibers perhaps okay and still be fairly shootable so that's the negative side of it the positive side of it is there is no positive side yes there is positive side is again it's very soft i'll load while i'm talking but it's it's a very soft shooting uh firearm Let's shoot some of this winchester try that you know just very comfortable to shoot okay and then also it uh the slide and everything pulls back pretty easily uh you know if you have a little arthritis or you're just weak uh you know in the hands uh there, there just are advantages to a firearm that doesn't knock you around so much and the springs are not so stiff that you can barely operate the slide so you know and then again for anybody you know, whether you're recoil sensitive or not uh you know the, the thing is just really uh sweet to shoot you know or any firearm this size and weight that's 380 it just uh, adds another dimension there and that's the first thing you notice if you're a very experienced shooter uh, or, or experienced at all you're used to shooting nines and 40s and other things 10 millimeter 44 magnum whatever you pick this up and it's a you know sizable firearm and it's just oh man it's not like shooting a 22 long rifle but uh very very uh soft you know recoiling and it's always nice which brings up the point you know if it's for defense is it too soft is it too weak a cartridge well there's some good night or 380 ammo out there and and uh you know you are still you can study all that and develop your own opinions a 380 is not quite a nine of course but uh it's not that far off and uh main thing is you have a firearm that you can shoot you're comfortable with and if that nine millimeter you have is too hard to rack the slide on and to you for you it recoils a little more than you like and all those kinds of things as we know there are more firearms now kind of in this size category the easy line of guns and and others that uh, you know they there's a lot to be said for them this is a blowback operation as i said uh and the blowback means it's the force of the round you know uh, reloads the next one and everything uh not gas operated really and it has a picatinny rail and uh what else about it uh you know, ambi safety of course and uh as you can see all right and again you got what i was saying there but uh, belabor that point but when you put that up to decock it uh i'll do it one more time there does seem to be like a notch there but it's really not a notch for anything, okay? So don't be fooled by that. If you're going to decock it, just push it all the way up hard and forget it, okay? There you go. Now that looks, again, for new shooters, uh, that doesn't fire the gun, okay? <laughs> you know, I think, I think you saw me do it with a round in the chamber, right? Uh, the decocker, like a lot of the old SIGs have and everything, you know, that actually decocks it safely, all right? That, uh, maybe I should have been more clear about that. I'm pretty uh, good at decocking a gun. This thing is a decocker too, isn't it? This thing called the trigger. It'll decock it every time, but it will fire if you do that, okay? So we'll shoot a couple more here. All right, what have I not told you anything? I, I, I don't know, if, you know John and I were talking about earlier. We, we're, we don't have familiarity with the early cheetahs. I never did own one, never did fire one. So I can't go, and I don't have an old one. I can't just go side by side. Well, here are the difference between the old ones and the new ones, and this one, and I, I can't really do that. And, uh, and but uh, so you'll have to you know, look that up yourself or find that somewhere else. I just give you our impressions of it, and it, it it's a fine little shooter. It, it feels good, you know. I I uh, I do liken it to my uh, Beretta Model 92 FS. That firearm, even though it's kind of a big 9mm, I criticize it sometimes for that. Uh, just a nice shooting firearm. Every time I bring it out, I just am, am impressed all over again about how 
you know, the slide is like it's on glass, riding on glass, and trigger's really nice. The single action trigger is wonderful. And, all the, and this shares a lot of those characteristics. It really is. Uh, the double action is not bad. And you get single action, it's a nice break, and it, you know, it's a smooth slide action, and, and everything. It feels like quality. Okay, feels like quality, and that's always good, right? Now, these Winchester rounds, I notice, have a pretty flat nose on them. I would not be surprised if we had a hang up. Some firearms don't like a flat nose like that. All right, what would not shot? Anything that matters? Let's just pretend uh, we have been engaged. I'm going to show you there's a round in a chamber, right? Yeah, let's decock it. See, that's how you safely decock it. Okay, let's decock it again and then just take the safety off and I won't recock it. So now I've got to fire the first round double action. All right, so we've been threatened, so it's time to. <laughs> so, you know, it's 380, low recoil. Uh, you're able to, to fire it. Follow up shots are probably easier than. A uh, nine millimeter and all that. So, decock it, put it in double action. Now again, I could go ahead and cock it and make it single action, but that's more the kind of thing you do at the range, like I'm going to do right now. Not do that and stick it back in your holster, probably. Okay. Sights seem to be right on. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty nice little pistol, I have to say. Fires without magazine. That means there's no magazine disconnect. So that's the thing about a semi-automatic pistol, right? You could have uh, someone who doesn't know much about firearms, you know, because uh, pick this up and oh, let me unload it to be safe. Yeah, there's a loaded magazine in it. Okay, now we're safe. I can do whatever I want with it. No, you can't, can you? Because that uh, round could still be in the chamber, and uh, and this one would fire with that round in the chamber. It would go bang, right? Okay, so if you have a magazine disconnect, which most pistols don't have these days, uh, that means you pull the mag out and it's not going to fire no matter what's going on in the chamber. Okay, that's what that means. No charge for that extra information. So Beretta, made in Italy, says right on it, the 80X Cheetah, a uh, cute little firearm. And uh, you know, if you're at the Tennessee Firearms Association banquet in September, you will see this one on the table. So uh, appreciate y'all coming by, really do. I haven't forgotten to tell you anything, have I? Anything you're dying to know? Just wanna make sure, life is good. Oh yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it? Uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at TalonGunGrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastol. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastol for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to Ballastol.com, TalonGunGrips.com. And also, while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.